Hello guys, welcome to Surveying Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your surveying problems. It's 9 7 in class again today. How have you been? We are going to have, um, let's say, a mini project or something like that. You know, we are going to simulate something. We are going to show you how you can walk through from um, Google Earth to AutoCAD. You know, you are trying to walk on an area. So let's say, Let's just um, search for this area. That's um, Ferrell's School of Surveying on your right. Good. Let's see this option. Good. So you are trying to work in an area and then you have acquired some data. Maybe you have the lines, you have points, you have polygons, and then you've actually created a folder here on Google. Earth. Then you want to move all of those data in its um, vector representation. You know to any GIS environment or let's say for you to move it to AutoCAD because um, that's our destination right good so how do you go about it I'm actually going to use uh, my alma mater which is um, the Federal School of Surveying so we are going to navigate to this particular campus and then the first thing we are going to do now is to just pick some features we have some polygons we have some lines we have some points so we just try to identify some features and then try to give them their names or let's say keep them in name right good so thanks for coming to class if you're coming to the channel for the first time you can encourage us by subscribing and if you're returning viewer thanks for always um, checking up on us now the first thing i guess we need to do is to create a folder because we are going to add every other thing we have to do on google Earth to that folder right good so you go to add then you go to folder right good so now let's give this folder a name okay let's call it um SS data, right? That's um, solving solutions data. Then we click on OK. Good. So we have our folder right there now, right? Then the next thing is for us to now start um, adding some of those features to that folder. So we can decide to right click, add, then add the polygons, the parts, and the place marks. So let's start by adding parts. And there is another method to it. So by the parts, you know, parts most times are in roots, right? So let's call this a um, one then we come to the we come to the, um, the project area then we try to pick some roads so let's say there's a road here you know depending on what you want to achieve you need to take your time to identify some of these um, vector data and then how you are going to what how you are going to select them right good so let's call this um, road one then um, the symbology and every other thing depends on you right good so let's uh, make this black can okay then let's also increase the width to let's say 1.5 if that's possible then we click on ok now you can see that we've added one road to our layer to our folder right good then we still come again instead of now using right clicking on this particular folder and adding we can also use this um, alternative of coming down to what to um sorry this is add part right good to add part then we still decide to maybe come down to the other side of the road if we can okay this last one is not fair enough let's try to move that to this side now for the purpose of um, demonstration we are using this as, a, as we've said earlier you can make yours um, more beautiful and you know try to zoom in to see some of those edges and how well you can work, how you can pick them right good so we have something like that there we can still move this we move that to this point, shift it a bit. No, this is supposed to come like this. Good. So let's say this is where we want to end for this particular line, right? Good. So we call this um, road two, right? So this will be road two. Now, line style, okay, still the same thing. Then we click on what? Okay, right? Good. So you still see that what it's under or it's still inside our folder, right? But now this folder is there. So now let's pick um, some polygon features. So we go to what add polygon, or we still come down to our folder, right click, we go to what add, then we see what polygon, right? So now let's select a few polygons we are going to add. Okay, let's just use these um, polygons that are here, these buildings that are here. We are going to join them. So let's then uh, make this a bit wider then let's pick one other point here let's take this up ok 
okay it's too much good then let's make this a bit good so we have that particular building there so let's call this um, bld1 right good let's call that bld1 that might be a classroom right then let's also come down to this um, other point where is our polygon again we have what add polygon right so we have shown you two ways how you can populate your folder either you right click on it and then you add or you just then um, select on the on the tool then automatically it adds to that folder and if per adventure it doesn't add to that folder you still have an option to what to move it or let's say yeah you see to move here yeah, you still have an option to move it or to to copy and then paste within that um, folder right good so there is a little good so we have defined that edge and then i think this is okay let's call this um, let's call this building two right good let's call this um, building two now yours might be more than two yours might be up to 150 depending on how much you want to start them should i call it vectorizing right good so we have picked two rows of picked two buildings and you can observe that they are all within what a folder right good so let's see the trees are point features right so let's go to let's use them add place mark we are trying to use that to maybe identify our point features then let's now select a different symbol so for the symbol let's um, use this and then the color let's change this to red we click on ok then the scale let's make it um, 0.5 right good we wanted five so we want it point five right let's make this a one point five good so okay now I think it's too big right it's too big let's make let's make um let's make it a one I think one is still fair enough or oh, let's see point nine let's see zero point nine right 0.7 let's make it 0.7 good so let's use them 0.7 then let's now try to move our place mark to a particular tree you know we can decide to use the icon of the tree but uh, we've just chosen to use that so we are using that as what uh, we are using that to indicate a point feature right good so we click on ok we are using that to indicate a point feature then we still come to add our place mark then if maybe there is an electric pole somewhere you can identify or something else that you want to identify as a point feature you still move it down there then you want to identify it accordingly right good so we have this as for three two right good so we click on ok you can see now that all of our data or all of the uh, yeah, all of our data are inside this folder so when we turn this um, the visibility of this folder of all of the data is turned off now what we are trying to achieve on today's video is that we are seeing how we can move all of this data at once to, to AutoCAD. How do we do that? The first thing is that let's try to save this um, uh, folder. Let's save it as places. So you just um, right click on it. Then you go to what save places as right. Good. So you click on that. Good. So we are working on a folder called um, G2CAD. So now let's give this a name. As we said earlier, SS data, right? Good. So let's say SS data, then let's act as though we can't spell. So we have what SS data, then the file type is what KML, and we click on save, right? Good. So we've actually saved this data. Now we are going to move it to um, a GIS environment and see what happens. When we want to move it to a GIS environment, we are actually using um, QGIS for this particular tax. So we go to layer. We go to what um, add layer then add vector layer right then we browse good so we have actually navigated to the folder where we have what our SS data right so we just select and then we click on open then we add so this is where something very important comes up good now it's there's a pop-up for us to select items we want to add so we are having like um, three entities right good we're having like three items or three entities points lines and polygons so yours might be multiple points multiple lines multiple polygons and different other officials that you would have within that folder so we've selected all and then we want to what we 
want to add them now there are two approaches we are going to use we are going to add all layers to a group and we are not going to add all of them to a group so that you can see the difference now when we add all the layers to a group we have everything together so when you have maybe up to 10 um, let's say 10 layers or maybe 20 layers you don't have your layer panels littered you can have all of them in a group so that you can turn on that group or turn off that group or maybe ma maximize or maybe minimize that group right could expand or let's say minimize the group right so we are going to add this um add layers to a group we just click on add you are going to see how it appears right good since this is the same data set we want to add we just click on add right so that that pop-up comes then we uncheck add um, layers to a group then we add layers now you can see how the both of them appears right now let's close this window now the first option as you can see we have what the three layers separately not in a group and then the second option as you can see we have the three layers what within a group so as it's in this group you can decide to minimize or let's say maximize this group and you have what your layer panel not too cluttered right good but when it's not grouped you have what all of the three layers outside like this right good so now for us to have um, let's say piece in our layer panel let's try to remove these other ones so we just click on okay to let those ones off right good so we still have what our three and um, we still have what our three layers or let's say our three our three entities we can decide to still add what um, a base map or something so we just prefer using them um, osm or okay instead of using osm let's um, use them um, google satellite because the data was actually gotten from what from google Earth, right good so let's use them um, google satellite so we go to where we go to quick map services we go to google then we now select them um, google satellite right just to overlay our data to see where it falls it's not supposed to be on the group good it's out now so let's give it some time to come up now this is where the most important or let's say yeah should we say most important this is a very important part of the video you know we have these um points layer we have the line layer we have the polygon layer and we want to export all of them to what to autocad because our destination as we said earlier is autocad right good so it's, it's overlaying and you can see how the points are the topology and you know we say them our destination is autocad so we can decide to start um, exporting each of these layers separately so you go to what the point you select them export you say um, same features as right good you come down to the line you click you right click you go towards um, export you say save features as and on that save features as you now select what's the the output file type right good so we are trying to save this um, vector layer as um, autocad dxf you shoot the destination the crs you shouldn't leave it as um, the project the geographic right so now this is the let's say the method we would have used however this would take us the stress of not having these three um these three entities or yeah these three features these three feature classes we have it now make them separately or maybe it will now export them separately rather it now export what these three layers separately but what we want is that we want to export it in a way that we have all of these data in a particular dxf file right so how do we do that that is the essence of the video not that we want to separate the point as autocad separate the lm the export the length as autocad maybe separately then the polygon as autocad no we want all of the three together because they are all within the same workspace or they are all the same within they are all within the same area right for us to achieve this the other alternative is for us to now go to what is for us to go to project so you click on project then you go to what import slash what export right good under import slash export you now go to what um export project to dxf now what this does is that you will see the pop-up what it does is that it exports all of the layers you have all of the layers you have in your work environment or in your js environment to what to a dxf file which means you don't have each layer exported separately you have all of the layers so if all of the layers are um are within the same project area you can decide to export them now that's not the end what if you have multiple maybe data of different um, locations you still have the options to what to select 
and on select what you want to add to your export that's what this particular panel does under this layer you would you can uncheck what you want to export so let's say you don't want to export the line features and you just want to export only the point features or you just want to you don't want to export the polygon features right good so you can also select all or deselect all right good so when you select all you know that all of these will be what all of these let's select all you know that all of these will be added towards your dxf file right now since all of these things are set your crs is very very important when you want to work on autocad it's always safer for you to use what the projected um, crs right good so if it's on um, wgs84 which is the project crs you have to move it towards to the projected within your area so you come to the crs selector then you now search for what your crs right good it's fill time for your crs we are using 31 so we click on ok right good now the next thing is the file name so let's click on browse good so back to our folder let's still call this um, stsm data right good data good so let's um, click on save so we have agreed that we are exporting all of these um, layers in our project so let's say if you have data that are not when within this um, particular project location you can uncheck them here right good so with this we have all of these um, features or entities in the excel file so we click on what okay well dxf exported um, export completed right good so now let's go to the folder and then access it good so this folder and then this was our ss data right let's open it there so our data is being loaded good it has been loaded successfully right now let's um, escape and then zoom extend that um, enter, e enter. it seems as though nothing has been displayed it's because of the line type and the color so just um just um, select or control a now you can see the color and the line type you know they are not um, actually what you want so you just click on that then you now change it from this um, line um, the color that was used to what to the default um, autocad color so let's say we are using white right good so you have it as white there now you can see your different um, features within the same what autocad file right good so these are the point features that we use for um, representing the trees and then these are the line features we use to represent the roads and then these are the polygonal features we use to represent what the, the buildings right good. so with this now let's now come to the different layers you now see what we have what ss data right outside um, the default um, autocad um, layer right good. so with this we have shown you how you can actually walk through from google Earth, you know creating different um, features within a particular folder moving that um, moving that folder or let's say saving that folder as a kml file moving it to a js environment and then from a js environment exporting the project as what dxf and then having your dxf on what on any autocad software right good so with this you can decide to improve maybe if you want to add a frame or do whatever you want to do with it you can decide to improve depending on what you want to achieve right good. so we believe we've been able to show you how you can run through this particular process so if you have any challenge or if you have um, any tax like this you can do well by contacting us and we are going to get back to you as soon as possible so until we see you on our next video ensure you keep staying safe and happy